Hey, welcome again to Speaking of Horses. Today, we're going to visit with Mr. Carl Bledsoe and his Just Gate Horsemanship from Georgia. Let's watch. Good afternoon. I'm Carl Bledsoe from Talking Rock, Georgia. My wife, Tammy, and I have a horse training facility here. We, we specialize in gated horses, but we work all breeds. I get as many quarter horses, as many Arabians, even a few Mustangs we've had here. Uh, we believe in taking care of the horse's body and his mind. We believe in a horse being balanced both mentally and physically. Today I'm going to share with you, I've got a seven-year-old Tennessee walking horse here. He's my personal horse. Uh, I'm the only person that's ever worked this horse. And we're going to talk about what, what I believe is a supple horse. And I believe that a horse has to be supple uh, before you can train him. I believe a horse has to be relaxed and relaxation and suppleness goes hand in hand. So when we get started, Jazzy stands pretty good for me. And uh, I like for him to stand square when he will. If he doesn't stand square, I, I work on him standing square because one day I might want to do, do a dressage test and that's just one of those things for the horse to balance himself, he needs to stand square. So that's one of the first things that I work on Another thing I work on is a horse being able to uh, lower his head. If I want his head down here, now, now he's got some grass here on the ground, so I'm gonna have to, might have to argue with him with this. I, I want my horse to stand and be relaxed. If I'm holding the rein, I want him to stand here relaxed with me and not put pressure on the rein. If I drop the rein, I want him to follow the feel of the rein. If I put a little pressure on his head, I want the horse to be relaxed enough and trust me enough that he'll do this. I want the horse to stand if I want to approach him. Ask him to pick a foot up. I want to be able to do that without having to manage my horse. I want to go all the way around the horse and be able to do all of these different things. Because he is relaxed mentally, and he has an expectation of what I'm going to do. I'm not going to pick his back feet up right now, but I'm going to talk to you about what I think a supple horse is. I'm going to make him move forward here just a little bit. I'm going to hold this rein just like I'm holding the rein riding this horse. And I want him to walk a circle. This is not quite a about a five meter circle and I want the horse's ribs to be out but I want the horse's head to be in towards me. I want I want his body to be in the same bend of the circle he's traveling. I want the horse to walk with his head level but when I get on this horse I want him in hand I want him to ride the same circle he does here in hand. So I'm going to ask him to stop Disengage his hindquarters. Stand for just a minute. Then I want to go the other direction. You notice that the outside front foot crossed over the inside front foot when he moved when he moved his shoulder there. Right here I'm looking for his back feet to fall in his front feet's tracks. I'm looking to see if I were sitting in the middle of his back, could I see the corner of his eye? If I raise my energy, can I get him to walk faster? If I slow my energy down, can I get him to slow down? All of these things to me are, are part of suppling, but it goes a little farther than that. If I ask the horse to back up, with just a little bit of communication, where he back. Do a good diagonal back and stop. All of this stuff is important, especially if you're going to trail ride. Mainly what Tammy and I work here, we have people that that do bring some show horses to us that we that we train, but we don't compete ourselves. But most of what we get are are horses that people are having trouble going down the trail and the the number one problem is, is the horses are just out of control mentally. They have no education 
kind of stand relaxed like this and pay attention. And if I need the horse to move one part of their body or another, just to move it without overreacting. I'm gonna walk back here to his, to his side. I'm gonna ask him to move his hindquarters over just a little bit. When I turn my body off, I want him to turn off. Guys, this is important for this horse to be able to do this. This is important for the communication between you and the horse to be this spot on. If you're going to trail ride, any kind of ride, but especially trail ride. You get out in the middle of a national forest on a horse that's out of control, that's not balanced mentally or physically, and you can't influence his back end or his front end, or you can't get him to drop his head. He wants to just run into the bit and run. It's unsafe for you, and it's unsafe for the horse. We spend lots of time on these supplement exercises. Guys, he's moved his hindquarters really good there. I'm going to see if I can move his shoulder away from him. I want, I want his right front foot to cross his left front foot. Right there. That's what I want. After I get that done, of course, we're, we're arguing with grass. After I get that done, then I get him the side pass. All of this stuff is stuff that you must be able to do if you're going to train a horse. If you want the horse to move his feet, put him on something. Come here, Jazzy. All of this stuff takes time and effort to get the horse to do this, but what is happening here is there's a reciprocal communication, and, and when I give the horse the, the cue that I need for him to do something, he listens to my cue, but he doesn't overdo it. That's a supple horse. I'm asking him just to move one end or the other, only to move his shoulder off of this. Move around me. I need to move his hindquarters away from me. I need to back up. And I just want him to be able to influence whichever part of his body I can. Can I get him to use one part of his body more than the other? Can I can I get him to put his feet in this ring right here? I've never done this with him, but maybe I can. Well, he's going to step over it. That's okay. All I want him to do is find a place to rest here in the middle of that ring with his feet. Just like that. I got one foot there. He's never done this before, but he's a supple horse. He realizes that I'm asking him to do something. I'm using the rein a certain way. I'm using my body a certain way, and he's reading my posture and he's trying his best to draw the conclusion that I need him to do. I'm going to bring him around and see if I can put the other foot in there. Hind quarters. Hind quarters. Big shoulder. Come up here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoop. We're going to get both feet this time, sports fans. Now, I'm not overusing the rain. Close, close, close. He can't find a place for his foot there where it's smooth. Back it up. Okay. So, so what you're seeing happen here, to me, this is a supple horse. I can get the horse to, to it, I can influence whichever part of his body I want to, but I can also get the horse to rise to the occasion and do something different with his front end or with his back end, and he listens to the communication. You guys sat right there and watched me communicate to him. There wasn't any force there. There was a little bit of verbal communication. There was a little bit of easy boy, and I used the rope just a little bit. All of this is important because when you get in the middle of the horse's back, the horse needs to have an understanding of what the aids are. That would be your legs, your seat, and your hands. And in, in, in the process that you go through when you're riding a horse is seat, legs, hands. You always ask with your seat first. You, 
you always reinforce what your seat says with your legs. And the last thing you do is you want to use your hand if something else hasn't worked. But I spend a lot of time doing these supplement exercises. Back up. I spend a lot of time doing these supplement exercises because I want a horse to give. I want the horse to understand if I pick this rein up, come to me. Come to me. Give just a little bit. Come to me. If I pick the rein up on this side, I want him to follow the feel of that rope and move his body according. I don't want any great big reaction. I don't want any big uh, response to me. I want him to look to me and say, hey, Dad, what do you need me to do? Right there is good. Now, beyond this, since I do gated horses, there are a couple of maneuvers that I do specific to the gated horses in, this, in, in my suppling exercises that helps me build into some moves riding that I'm able to do. And one of them is a shoulder in move. And ideally what I'm trying to do is get this foot closest to me. I'm gonna come back towards you. Get this foot closest to me to cross over the front of that foot over there. Now, I use that maneuver when I'm mounted to help these, these gated horses that come to me that are not in gait. That one maneuver right there, when I teach it on the ground and then I take it to a mounted exercise, it helps me achieve the correct gait with these horses. Guys, you can't do that without a supple horse. You can't do that with a horse that's not, that's not supple on both sides. So we've got to do that both directions, Jazzy. Come on around. I'm going to come back towards the camera. The leg closest to me is going to pass over the leg that's on the other side. Shoulder in maneuver. Guys, it's paramount with the gated horses that you get that maneuver down. Because like I say, it, 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 it just aids in these horses gating correctly. <clears throat> it aids in these horses finding both mental and physical balance. So. I spend a lot of time with my horses. Uh, I've done a couple of other educational videos um, uh, in the past. And, and a horse being patient and, and waiting on you and, and not wanting to walk off. Horse's ability to stand quietly, not be overreactive, but be in the lesson. So when I go to the trail, I don't want this horse's head up here looking at the crowd and all that. I want the horse to have this appearance right here. You know, it's okay if he looks around and, and it, it, something happens over there in the edge of the woods and he needs to turn and look. It's his nature to do that. He needs to see what's going on. But I don't want a great big reaction going on with stuff. So we're going to hang out here just for a few minutes and then I'm going to get a, a, a side pass or two. Uh, Go over here and they are our family and we only want the best for them. No standing water means clean, good tasting, algae free, mosquito free, and virus free water. No risk of electric shock, no risk of fire from faulty wiring. Cool water in the summer, warm water in the winter. Water delivered fresh from the water supply at 50 degrees year round. Drinking post water. Speaking of horses, are very proud to have Total Equine Feeds as a sponsor for our many programs. We are really happy to have Dr. Harry Anderson and Total Equine Feeds involved with Speaking of Horses. They manufacture all type of feeds and nutritional products for all types of animals, horses, equine, cattle, birds, all types. Total Equine Feeds is a great supporter and longtime friend of speaking of horses. Thank you to Total Equine Feed.
I don't always use a pole when I do this, but it's good for the horse to have a, a, a guide to go by when you first start. It's good to have the pole to do that. So I'm gonna bring him up here and set him up. Then we're just gonna side pass the pole. Oh, Dad, you don't mess it up. He's not done this in probably, oh, I don't know, six months. Now, ideally, what I want to do when I do this, and we're making mistakes. You, you guys see I don't get wrapped around the axle if the horse makes a mistake. All I'm trying to get the horse to do is to match me. If I'm asking him to do something, I'm trying to show you guys how to work and keep working to get the horse to work with. Supple horse. One that's willing to move his body. And one that's interested enough in what you have to say that he's listening to you. All of these are great things to do with your horse and, and if, if you're me, and you enjoy the, the, the union between the person and the horse, there's no limit to the things that you can do to teach the horse how to do this. Um, I like for all the horses that come to me to, for training to, to get to where they're like this around me, to where they're not reactive, where they're aware of everything that's going on, but they're into the lesson and they're, they're like I say, supple. It's a mental thing, but it's a physical thing too. The mental part is, is the horse being here and being willing to listen to you. The physical part is, can you get the horse to do the different things that you need him to do? So, we're gonna work a few times here on, on suffering, communicate. I'm gonna see if I can drive him around. Step over the pole here and stop. Nope, didn't do it, so we're gonna go one more time. This takes time. You've seen me make mistakes. You've seen Jazzy make mistakes. We're not perfect. But here's the thing, if it was perfect and you guys didn't see me make mistakes and, and me have to change me and change my communication for Jazzy, you wouldn't learn from stuff. All of this stuff's doable for anybody if you just get out there and try it. I'm gonna bring the shoulder back around. We're gonna go the other direction. See if I can move him laterally off of it. Bring his head to me. Well, kind of. Okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little session today. I hope I gave you some insight on, on some of the different things you can do that, that will help your horse be a better partner for you. It'll help him be more balanced mentally. It'll be more balanced physically. You can get me on Facebook. It's just Gabe or Carl Bledsoe. My website's Carl Bledsoe Horsemanship. Thanks so much. Good guys. afternoon. My name is Brian. Um, I am the owner of Ward School Feeder. Uh, we produce a hay net of different sizes from two plates up to the four four eight square bale, uh, made out of a polyurethane polyurethane material that is in the fishing industry is the dragon. We're getting anywhere from three to seven years of life out of our nets on average. On average, my horse is destroyed nets in 12 to 24 hours. 
we can be found on the web under moreandmoresmokeclear.com, as well as Facebook and Pinterest. So thank you very much for your time. Equessentials Horse Care Products, a complete horse care package of all grooming, skin care, body care products, all from Equessentials. Developed by Dr. Tom Tweeten, these products are all tested and checked to make sure they're safe on your animals, horses, and in some cases, dogs and the like. But you need to have Equessentials as a part of your tack box and routine. That's Equessentials Horse Care Products. And thanks for joining us here on this episode of Speaking of Horses.